Hi, John here. Today we're going to be looking at how you can use Dispatch with a modular synth like this. Just want to make it very clear that like you don't need a modular synth to use Dispatch. This is just like an added fe a feature that I added recently. Um, if you've got like a expert sleep module like this that has like inputs and outputs from your um, Ableton setup, then you can send signals to and from Dispatch really, really simply. In fact, if you consider that like Dispatch has five different modulators built in and the matrix works and all these kinds of things, it can almost function as like a Eurac LFO. Um, except we can do cool stuff like we can modulate with like Ableton stuff, we can automate. Um, yeah, we can do lots of nice stuff. So I'm going to make a quick patch here. Uh, we're going to like be working with like a resonant EQ, uh, the wave multiplier, which is like a distortion, and just like an oscillator out from maths. So we take our oscillator out. And then we take the wave multiplier out and we put that into the resonant EQ. So over in Ableton, we've got Dispatch open here. I'm going to open this side panel here and using this audio CV output section, we can route either any of the modulators A, B, C or D or any of the submixes I, these are my new ones here. And we can select them to any output, be it like an audio channel in live or um, out to our ESA. So I'm going to patch this up here. I'm going to select all four outputs of my ES, uh, ES8. I'm going to switch all these on. And you'll see now that we start to get these like sign uh, signals coming out of uh, the Expert Sleepers module. So let's patch one up and take a listen. You can add in some of the Euclidean generator. Now, one of the new features of the 1.2 update is that we've got this Euclidean uh, pulse generator, which generates on and off signals. We've now got this envelope parameter here, and what this lets us do at 100% it is a pulse wave on and off. But as I slow start to bring this down, you'll see we start to get envelopes instead. I'll just turn these down so you can see it a bit clearer on, on the uh, scope. So we can get these super snappy envelopes. I'm just going to turn the modulation a little more over here. And then we can bring in another one here. Let's add in a bit more of the slope generator. And the right, and the ring which there. So yeah, we've now got four different modulators all affecting this uh, fold parameter here. Next I'm going to add in another stage of distortion and I'm going to show you what we can do with like inverting signals. So, the first stage of distortion output goes into the second. And then we're going to listen to the second stage. I'm just going to turn the modulation down to start with. Um. 
So let's take our second output of dispatch and attach that to the CV in here. So we're now looking at the second column here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to take, some, what, take the mix down that we had here, I'm going to invert some of these signals. And so what's happening here is, when I bring the modulation in on that first stage of distortion, whenever the first stage of distortion goes high, the second one goes low. So yeah, that's currently droning away at the minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the second, the output of the second stage of distortion, feed it into this top uh, wave multiplier, and this basically acts as like a VCA. It's going to make our signal louder or quieter. Just got to hook this one up. So yeah. Third output is now controlling uh, the amplitude on the VCA. Here's another patch I put together to show you different ways that you can use dispatch's functions together. So here we have the pitch CV, we have the amplitude CV, and we have some wave folding shape in CV. So this has just got into an attenuator, which is controlling the pitch of the mass. And with this patch, if we combine the pulse generators and the Euclidean generators, every time that the signal goes on and off, we can set what voltage that should be. And if we tune that to an interval, when those signals overlap, we get different sequences, uh, like melodic sequences. So yeah, let's have a listen. Now here I'm using maths, which isn't like a stable oscillator, and I don't have a quantizer. If you've got like a quantizer, this is going to be a lot easier. This is just something that I quickly put together. So we have the pitch being controlled by dispatch using the, the overlapping pulse generators. Now I bring in some of the wave folding. And I'll bring in some of that amplitude modulation here. Is that a bit of delay? And remember, we've got four different slots in dispatch that we can use to save all of these different parameters. So we might have these um, pulse generators tuned to certain intervals now. We could create four different melodic sequences and switch between them. Here I'm going to change some of the clock rates and things like that of the modulators and you'll see how the sequence changes. Oh, you'll see here as well, I'm using this rise prime here, otherwise we get this snappy attack sound, which is kind of nice, but... So yeah, just another way that we can use dispatch.
So far we've taken signals from dispatch and sent it out to our modular, but now let's do the opposite where we take a signal from our modular and send it into dispatch. With the new 1.2 update, we've got a new modulator and that's the audio CV in. So we can select any audio channel in live or any of the inputs on our interface as the input for this. And it's got two functions. It can work as a CV in, so we take our CV signal in and we convert it to like an Ableton modulation signal which we can map to any parameter. We can also take an audio channel from live and use it as an envelope follower using the Ryzen 4 parameter. We've just uh, selected the first input of our expert sleepers module here. So let's take a look at some of the different signals. First, we got the sine wave from the Dixie. Next, we got a square wave. And here you'll see the Ryzen 4 on the input. With this Ryzen 4, uh, there's a few different things that we can do that's if we're using a sequence like this, which I'll show you in a second, we can actually add like portamento. Um, there's tons of other things that you can do with, um, with uh, manipulating the Ryzen 4 times. Next, let's take a signal from our maths. And you can see here that we're only covering half of the range. So it's not going uh, below zero volts. So what we need to do in this situation is we need to use the polarity switch here to select a unipolar signal. And now that signal from the maths is spread across the entire range of the modulation. If we were to take, go back to our sine wave from the Dixie, you'll see that we're like cutting off half of the signal here. So in Iraq we get tons of different kinds of signals and we need to be able to uh, tell dispatch what kind of signal we're receiving and what kind of signal we want to send into the matrix mixer. So yeah, anything in Europe can be like minus 5 volts, plus 5 volts, 0 volts to 10 volts. We've got the range control and we've got the polarity switch. That'll let us manage what kind of signal we're sending in. Next, let's take a look at getting the sequence patched into dispatch. So we're going to take the sequence out from the top row, patch that into the first input of our expert sleepers module. And you'll see here that the CV signal is now controlling the filter in live. Now to send clocks to this, we could use a clock out device from live, or we could just use dis dispatch itself. So let's take the first output of our expert sleepers module, put it into the clock in. And then over in dispatch, we'll take our second output of our, our B modulator. We'll send that out of the ES1, out of this um, output here. And let's select the Euclidean generator. Just going to monitor the signal here. So you see we're getting these trigger signals here. And as soon as I unmute this, the sequencer is now advancing. Now it's advancing the right way. <laughs> so yeah, we've got the Euclidean generator here sending out um, trigger signals. That's controlling the clock of the sequencer. And now this sequencer is synced and being fed into live just using dispatch. Everything here is done with dispatch. It's now controlling the filter on, um, on this channel here. So if I play a loop, 